Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be producing what you see before you on the screen here, which is of course a string of lights. Now, in order to produce this we're going to be using the Python generator and we're also going to be making use of a dynamic spline and attaching the objects to it. And we're going to be learning that there's going to be a few hurdles that we're going to have to overcome in order to achieve the desired result. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing we're going to do is create the spline. And to do this, I'm going to switch to my right hand view, so F3. And then we need to create a spline with 12 points. So we'll just make a bit of an adjustment to our window here. That's a bit better. And we'll switch on snapping, grid work plane, and we'll get rid of grid line. Reach for the spline pen tool, and we can start work. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and finally 12 points. Hit the escape key, and we've got our spline set up. I can switch back to my 3D view, so F1, and we can see that we're where we need to be. Now, let's think about where we're going next. We need this to be a dynamic spline, so we need to give it a dynamics tag. So we'll come into simulation here and say rope. Give it a rope tag. Now, our two endpoints we want to be fixed. Let's just escape out of there, select the brush selection and just select those two. So shift and select that one. So we've got our two endpoints selected. Now, if we go into our rope tag here, we can set our fixed points. So we'll just hit the button there and they will now be fixed. But if we play the simulation and we select our spline, we can see that it's actually still here. Now that's a problem because we need to be able to work with our points and what we're getting with this unified particle based dynamic system, we're actually getting a kind of a clone of the spline, like an instance of the spline, which is procedural. And the spline here doesn't have any points. So that's no good to us because we can't have attached anything to this. It won't work. So we need to select our rope tag, go into our basic tab here and check legacy solver and now we, we will get a spline that actually is a spline with points so that's fine that's going to work out perfectly well for us so that's really important make sure if you want to do anything of the nature that we're going to do here with a dynamic spline make sure that you use the legacy solver make sure you check that okay let's move on from here and see where we're going next I'd quite like my spline to be swaying around as if it's being blown by a gentle breeze. So from our simulate menu, we can bring in forces here and we'll say turbulence. And then we can set the turbulence up as follows. 30 for the strength I found works well, 60 for the scale. The frequency 100% is perfectly good and we'll set the mode to aerodynamics wind. In our rope tag, we need to come into our forces and add the turbulence into here. And then if we run the animation, in fact, what we need to do is give ourselves a few more frames before we do that. Otherwise, we're not going to see anything. Give ourselves a thousand frames. Run the animation and we should now st start to see the spline swaying around gently in the wind. And we can see that it is. It's subtle but it is being moved around and that's what I want. It will be more obvious when the lights are attached to the spline, but you can see that it is actually working. Fantastic, so we've got it that far. Moving on from here, we can start delving into the Python. So we'll grab a hold of a Python generator and we can start work. We'll switch to the uh, script mode or script layout, I should say. Open in the expression editor. 
we've got everything set up we'll just give ourselves a little bit more of our window I think so that we can see better at the moment we're generating a cube because we're returning that base object we can take that away in fact we can take all of this away hit execute and remove where are we have we got we still got the cube in there we don't really want that let's just play that's better okay we've got nothing in there now fantastic we're ready to start work from here the first thing we need to do is bring in this spline object we also need to create a null object before we go there and call this lights because we're going to need to bring this object in too so let's search for our spline so if we say spline is equal to doc dot search object brackets open single quotes spline close single quotes that will bring the spline in and we'll be able to work with it from there if we just print spline we should if we execute see that we've got that object and we have the next thing to do is search for our lights object here we'll call this parent and we'll say is equal to and it will be similar to this so we'll copy it and paste it in and simply change the word spline to the word lights and that will bring the null in and we're ready to work with it our next line will be children is equal to and it will be parent dot get children open close so if our lights were to contain any other objects if it were if it were the parent object of any children we would get those at this point and bring them into a list at the moment of course it doesn't have any children so the lines at the moment irrelevant but it won't be later on now we can create a basic material in here because we are going to attach a material to our lights to make them actually glow so what we're going to do is change the color for a start and we'll make this essentially an off white so that it's it's just about a sort of very basic yellow so just take it down a little bit more to make it a little bit more yellow something like this that will be fine we don't need any reflection so we'll take the weight down to zero the next thing that we're interested in will be the emission and we'll bring this in and again we'll make it a yellow sort of color so that we maintain that and we can bring the weight up we'll, we'll give it something like 10 as a starting point and that's given us a nice glowing sort of char um, character to our material there and we'll just call this light that's fine and that really is as much as we need to do uh, with the material that's perfectly good uh, for our purposes here if you want to go further with it then please do but I'm going to leave it at that okay so let's move on from here the next thing we need is the ubiquitous frame variable so frame is equal to can you tell me what it is it's doc dot get time open close get frame open doc dot get f p s open double close and yeah okay i'll say it for anybody who doesn't know <laughs> this just brings in the frames here from the timeline it will give us the current frame from the timeline whatever that happens to be okay let's move on we need to bring in the materials or material let's do that here so material is equal to and it will be doc dot get materials open close which will just simply bring this into a list 
containing just that particular texture because obviously we've got no others. But anyway, that gets that sorted out and we've got it there ready to use later on. Now, the next thing we need is that we've got a, a spline here and we can see that it's got 12 points. So we need that point count. We need that value because it's going to be useful to us. So the next thing to do then is to say P underscore count is equal to and it will be spline dot get point count. OK, and that brings that value in again. If we print this value or print this variable, we'll say P underscore count. And we hit execute, we get 12. It tells us that there are 12 points within the spline. Fabulous. Let's move on from here. We've got our variables completely set up now. And as you can see on this occasion, there's no globals. We don't actually need any of those. The next step then is to basically initialize things at frame zero. So we'll say if frame is equal to zero. And the first thing we need to do is check our children list here and see if there's anything in it. And if there is, we need to clear it out. So we can say if len brackets children is greater than zero for i in range brackets len children double close children I really must learn to type brackets i dot remove open close and that will clear the children list out and at the same time of course lights if it has anything in it that will be cleared out okay so that's the first step the next step is to work with a while loop so our first line will be count is equal to zero because we need to work with a counter we can then say while and it will be count is less than p underscore count minus two colon. Now, why p count minus two? Well, we know that we've got fixed points at the beginning and end of our spline. And we don't want to work with these points because obviously one of them might be fixed to a wall, the other to a post or whatever. But we do want to work with the points in between because these will be the ones that we're going to hang our lights from. So that's why we're saying p count minus two. We can then say null is equal to c for d dot base object brackets c for d dot o null. And that will bring a null object into the scene that we can then place in lights. And that's what we're going to do next. So doc, and it will be insert object brackets null parent, which of course we defined up here as being lights, comma none, comma true. And that will place the object in here. Fantastic. So that's our first little step and we can move on from here. The next all important line is count plus equals one. We're not finished with this loop yet, but it's important to put this line in at this stage because a while loop will crash Cinema 4D if we don't, especially if we hit the execute button. So if we hit execute, we can see that lights now contain 10 nulls. OK, so that's all working. It's doing what it should do. But if we didn't put this line in and we executed, we'd crash. We'd get the spinning wheel of death and that would be it. But we're OK. Everything's doing what it should do and we can move on from here. The next thing we need to do is bring in a sphere, which will be, well, we need 10 of them ultimately. But the sphere object will be, of course, the light globe. 
So we'll bring one of those in. So we'll say sphere is equal to, and we can copy this line here, paste it in, and say O sphere. We can then think about working with a couple of our spheres parameters. Now, if we bring a sphere object into the scene, we can see that we've got radius and we've also got type. Now, we'd like our type to be an icosahedron and our radius I'd like to make four. So let's just drag this in here. And as per usual, it puts it in the wrong place, but we'll paste it in here and we'll say sphere, paste it in, and then we can just take this away. And the radius will make equal to four. We'll then drag in the type and set this up accordingly. So just paste it in here, put a small s on the beginning and just say equal to four once again. And that will give us the correct type. We'll just move our count value or our count variable back to where it should be. Okay. Let's just see where we go next. Well, we just need to place this into the document. So again, we can copy this line, drop it in here. But on this occasion, we need to replace null with sphere and replace parent with null. Because we want this sphere to be a parent of these nulls. Or I beg your pardon, not a parent. I, we want the nulls to be the parents. We want the spheres to be the children of these nulls. So let's go back to zero. And we can see that we've actually done it. They're all in there. So that's fine. That's worked perfectly. So let's move on and do a little bit more. We'd like these spheres to have fong tags. Now at the moment, Let's just see where we are. I've got a sphere up there. Let's just get rid of that. We can see our sphere down here. If we just zoom in a little bit closer, we can see it. And we can see that it is indeed an icosahedron. And at the moment, we can see all the facets because we don't have the fong tag. So let's add that. We can say fong, if I can spell it correctly, is equal to. And it will be c4d dot base tag on this occasion, brackets, T, Fong. So that creates the Fong tag, and we just need to add it to the sphere. So we can say sphere dot insert tag brackets Fong. And now if we hit execute, let's see where we are. Have we got anything wrong? Did I mean Fong? Yes, I did. I certainly did. Where are we? Oh, C, I beg your pardon, I should have put C4D in there. C4D dot Fong or T Fong. Let's hit and see if we're OK there. Did you mean insert tag? Yes, I did. What have I done there? Where are we? Oh, yes, of course. Spelt it wrong. Insert tag Fong. And now we've got it. We can see that we've smoothed the sphere out. And if we open, we can see that we've got a Fong tag inserted. Fabulous. So we've got it that far. Moving on from here, we can add our texture. Bad edit. We know that we called that light. So we've got light here. We can add this to our sphere along with our phone tag. So if we say texture is equal to and it will be C4D dot base tag once again. And on this occasion, it will be brackets C4D dot T texture. So we're creating a texture tag. Now at the moment, the texture tag does not have this material associated with it. So we need to sort that out. So we've got to say texture dot set material and it will be brackets material, which we defined up here, 
bracket zero because of course it needs to be the first material we've only got one material anyway so that's what we need to do there and that will add this material or, or make this material associated with the tag that we're creating we can then say sphere dot insert tag brackets and it will be texture and that will add the texture tag with the correct material to our sphere again let's execute and see what we get and we've got it there it is and it's on all of them and we can see that we've got this glowing here fantastic so we've got it that far now let's see where we go from here what we want if we just go back to our example file and we zoom in to our globes we can see that they're mounted upon cylinder objects which makes them appear to have sockets effectively you know the kind of thing that you might see and of course they're just attached to the spline here to the electrical cable let's just go back then and start working a little bit more to bring those in so we can say cylinder is equal to and once again we can copy this from here and it will be O cylinder we can then start to think about working with some of the parameters for the cylinder so let's bring in a cylinder object way too big of course but we, we're interested in working with the radius we're interested in the height and we're also interested in the rotation segments so let's start bringing those in we'll bring in the radius little c on the beginning and the radius for this one we'll make just two so it's a very small radius we can then bring in the height and work with that so again just bring this back to where it needs to be so our cylinder height will make that three and finally we'll bring in the rotation segments so let's get that in drop it in here once again bring it back up to here and our rotation segments will make equal to 60 so we'll make it quite a nice object a nice uh, Where are we? Let's just get that in the correct place. That's it. Okay, so it's going to be a nice smooth object. Now we could, if we so wished, add a fong a fong tag to this. I won't do it, I don't think. Or or perhaps we will. I don't know. Yeah, why not? It's easy enough to do it, isn't it? So let's just say cylinder dot insert tag brackets fong. We may as well, because it's it's as simple as that to do it. So we've got all of that set up and worked out. Let's get that it's just sorted out so that we get everything on a par if we can. That's it. That's what I want. OK, so all of our cylinder parameters are now set up and we've also added a form tag to it. Let's just execute this and see what we've got see if we've got anything there oh we haven't let's have a look hang on have we done this yet cylinder equals no we haven't inserted yet we're just going to do that last piece so let's do that copy this line drop that in there and on this occasion it will be cylinder and we will be inserting it under the nulls so that's perfectly good. They're going to be the parent of the sphere and the and also the cylinder. Right, let's hit execute and see what we get this time. And we do have it. We've got our cylinders and we've got our phone tag on there. Now the interesting thing is that we don't have on our on our spheres a phone tag anymore. 
and I don't quite know what's happened there because we've got the lines here to do it. We've created the fong tag here and we've said that we want the fong tag on the sphere. Down here we've said that we want it on the cylinder. Now that's very curious. We've only got it on the one. It doesn't really matter if we don't have the fong tag on the sphere. It doesn't matter at all because it's a glowing object and I don't think it's going to make much difference. But it's very interesting that that is no longer working the way it should actually work. So if anybody knows the answer to that conundrum, I'd be interested to hear what it is. But I can't understand why that doesn't work. But I just thought I'd show you that because it didn't work on my original file either. So let's just we might as well just comment that out. Actually, we'll leave it in there, but we'll just comment it out. Let's just hit that again. And see what we get and that's interesting now it says that oh sorry I've, I've done the wrong line I should have done that one just comment that out let's just execute yeah I know it's okay and we've got the same scenario but yeah I don't know I don't know what's going on there that's really weird um, it, it works initially and then when you add this line it doesn't I don't know something strange going on there but anyway that will do for that that's okay we can see that this is going to work for us and it's going to do the job Right, so that's our while loop and everything that needs to be in it completely sorted out now. We don't need to do any more with this and we can move on from here and take the next step. First thing we can do is remove our cylinder because we don't want that anymore. And then we can set up our window so that we can see our spline. Okay, let's continue. At this level, so level with the if, frame is equal to zero we need to continue by saying for i in range and it will be brackets one comma p underscore count minus one because we know that we want to hang our lamps on the points between the two ends. So these points are the ones that we're interested in, the ones I've just highlighted. So we need to start from point one, which of course is this one, and we need to finish at point 10, which is the penultimate point. So we've got to say P count minus one. So that's why we set that up the way we have. We can then say point is equal to, and it will be spline dot get point brackets i. We are now sequencing through the points that I've highlighted. We can then say children. So we're interested in working with the objects that we've got in lights here. And these are the children, the, the, the nulls here. And of course they contain these other objects, but these are the children that we're interested in. So children and it will be brackets i minus one because of course we start with one but our children start with zero so that's very important we're zero through to nine that they're our children those are their index values so we must subtract one from i so children brackets what minus one i minus one dot and then we can say set absolute position brackets and it will be point okay so that's what we're going to do now we can't leave it at that because we've got to constantly offset I've spelt range wrong aha okay let's just put that in that's better now our first loop deals with the child objects within the light null. It sets their positions. We now need to offset the positions of the children of those child objects. That's the next problem that we've got to solve. So let's see what we can do in order to make this work. For i in range and it will be brackets len brackets children double close we can then say 
offset. That's what we've got to set up next, an offset. So an offset, and it will be a list. So it's equal to, and it will be one comma five. Now, why? Why are we setting that up that way? If we just go back to my example file and we look at what we've got here, we've got the spline coming through here. It's inside a sweep nerves with a circle, making it into an electrical cable, essentially. Now, we can see that this cylinder object is offset from the center point of the points along the spline, okay, or the point that it's associated with. The point will be in the center, but this is offset, and it's minus one that it's offset by. This globe is also offset, and it's five that this is offset by, so this is minus five. That's the reason then that we've set our list up with the values one and five. These are going to be subtracted from the point position of the current point that we're working with. Okay, so let's move on from here. We can say child is equal to children brackets i, oops, that's not quite right, brackets i, that's it, dot get children. open close. So on this occasion, child is equal to children brackets i, so it's this sequencing through these children, but it's interested in these, which is why we're saying get children. So we're creating a, a miniature list in a, a, temporarily, basically, because of course we're sequencing through all of these, but every time we touch one of them, we're getting the children. So we're getting these two into a new child list called child and then we'll be able to work with them and make them offset so that's what we're doing there we can then create a second loop so a nested loop we can say for l in range and it will simply be brackets 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 because of course we're interested in the two children. Moving on from here, we can say pos is equal to child brackets L dot. And at this point, we've got to do something a bit different. Get ML. So we're working with the local matrix. Get ML, get matrix local. Okay. We must work with the local matrix because we can't just simply work with the absolute position of the points of the spline. We, it's not quite as simple as that. So let's see what we're doing here. If we just print pause and execute, we get the matrices. Now let's just move, can we move that out? I'll tell you what, let's get rid of the texture. That's better. Now we can see what we're doing. Now, at the moment, the offset vectors are all zero, 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 zero. They they are different to that. They will change uh, as as things move around. So, what we're interested in is certainly working with this offset vector. So, in order to do that, what we need to say it's essentially vector to reals, which we've used before. So, it's x is equal to pos. And it will be dot off dot x. And then we can just copy the code, paste it in, paste it in again, and we can just change these. Y is equal to pos dot off dot y. And finally, z is equal to pos dot off dot z. So we've got our vector to reals effectively going on here. So we get, we're getting our position vector and we're changing that, or our, our offset vector rather, uh, and we're changing it to real values. We can then say vect for vector is equal to, and it will be c4d dot vector brackets x comma y comma z, and finally child brackets l, 
dot set absolute position vect. And that completes the code. Now let's just see what happens. I'm actually lying to you when I say it completes the code because it, it, it doesn't actually. There's things that we need to do in order to get it to work. So at the moment we're not getting what we want. Now the first reason why we're not getting what we want is because we've got these two checked. We need to uncheck them. If we then run the sequence, we now get our spheres and also our cylinders, but they're inside the spheres, actually aligned with the spline. We don't get the offset though, because we've still got a couple of lines of code that we've got to put in. So here we've got to say, if y is greater than, and we can say minus offset brackets i, or rather L, I beg your pardon, L, colon, and then we can say y is equal to pos, oops, I didn't put y in there, y is equal to pos, and it will be dot off dot y minus offset brackets L. So we're sequencing through here and we're literally subtracting one or five from y dependent on the value of L. And that should do what we want it to. Let's see if it does. And now we can see that we've got our lights set up. If we just zoom in, we can take a look at one of them and there we go. We can see that that's now doing its job. So that is working as it should, and that's the code. That's as much as you need to do with the code. Okay. I mean, of course, if you wanted to, you could create materials for the cylinders and you could bring those in. It's, the, it's repetition, basically. It's the same sort of stuff if you want to do that. But I'm not going to bother. You've seen how to do it once. I'm not going to repeat myself. But uh, if you wish to do it, you certainly can. But yeah, that completes the code. Now, to finish this off, we know that this spline could do with being an electrical cable. So let's bring in a circle and let's think about how big it needs to be. Let's try something like 0.2. It needs to be pretty small in its radius. Drop it above our spline, select them both, hold down command and option and drop them into a sweep. Right, so we've got our electrical cable there. In fact, I think we can make the, the circle 0.3. And there we go. That's just about the perfect size. Just hit H so that we can see the whole thing. And there it is. And we can just run the sequence. And we can see that our lights sway gently in the breeze. So yeah, that's all working perfectly. And that is how you go about making a string of lights using the Python generator. And it works absolutely beautifully, as you can see. You can just add some turbulence, uh, you know, and various other bits and pieces just to make it work. Dynamics, you know, just to make it a bit more lively. But yeah, that's how you do it. I mean, of course, if you wish to, you can select your dynamics here and we can set the initial state of our spline. It will still bounce around though, but there's not really very much you can do about that. If you do wish to render, the best way to avoid this problem is to cache the dynamics and then scrub through the timeline until you find a frame where you're happy with the result and then render from that point onwards. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's working beautifully. So that just about completes this tutorial because I've shown you what I wanted to and you've seen how to go about making this happen. And as always, I really hope you've enjoyed doing this one and that it's given you some ideas for things that you might be able to incorporate in your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.